starting off this countdown, we have A858. In 2011, a Reddit user posted a strange and indecipherable code to the subreddit RA858DE45F569BC9. Very long, so people refer to it as A858 for short. On the subreddit, this user would post puzzles and cryptic messages. It gained a lot of traction and people were desperately trying to crack these puzzles. No one has been successful to this day. Things got strange when the original poster disappeared for four years. When they came back in 2015, that's when he began dropping subtle hints, including a message that when decoded, it revealed an image of Stonehenge. Sadly, in 2016, the page became private, and I believe that it still is private. In our ninth spot, we have Publius Enigma. This is an unsolved puzzle or riddle that was posted on the internet by a user named Publius. Basically, they said that there was a message hidden in the 1994 Pink Floyd album, Division Bell. Many people have tried to solve this puzzle, but none have been successful. It was said though that whoever solved the riddle would be given a reward. Now, the band denied any association with this riddle, and if that's the case, who's behind it? How do you solve it? And what is the reward? In our 8th spot, we have Gary McKinnon. In 2002, Gary McKinnon was determined to figure out if aliens were real. He spent hours researching them and trying to figure out what NASA was hiding. That's when he decided to hack into NASA to see what he could find. In the end, he discovered an image of some sort of strange flying aircraft in the sky. When NASA noticed that an outsider had obtained this information, his access was shut off. Of course, NASA has always denied Gary's claims on the UFO photos that he saw. In the end, Gary was let off the hook. But to this day, we don't know if what he saw was real, or if he made it up, or what. In our seventh spot, we have Unfavorable Semicircle. This is said to be YouTube's strangest mystery. It started in March of 2015, when a YouTube account with the title Unfavorable Semicircle was created. From there, they started to post weird cryptic videos all titled with the Sagittarius symbol and then random numbers. The videos were often of abstract, pixelated images. Some videos were accompanied with weird and distorted sounds. In fact, in some of the videos, you can hear a muffled male voice breathing or reciting random letters or numbers. This channel posted thousands of these weird, cryptic videos. To this day, nobody knows what the videos mean or who's behind them. Now here's where it gets weird. A bunch of Reddit users became determined to solve this mystery. From there, the channel gained a lot of attention. But as soon as this happened, YouTube suspended the account without explanation. The videos are basically lost forever. All that's left are bad screen recordings of them. Moving on to number six, we have the Plague Doctor video. This is another very famous video on YouTube. The video features a person dressed in a Plague Doctor mask, doing a bunch of weird stuff in a rundown building. Now, the video title was in binary code. When translated, it spelt out death in Spanish. How creepy is that? Not only that, but the video is filled with an awful buzzing sound. And apparently, if you put this buzzing sound into a spectrogram, which basically gives you a visual representation of the sound, it apparently makes the shape of a woman who's being harmed. To this day, no one knows what's up with this video, or who's behind it, or what it means. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with our creepy. Now this is another part to that creepy plague doctor video. So when that video became viral, the subreddit our creepy became devoted to solving this mystery. However, along the way, some mysterious people started posting weird messages in the forum. One was a Morse code message that when translated said, red lips, life tenth. Don't know what that means at all. And then they also posted, 2015, there will be three. Again, no one knows what this means. Other messages included a list of chess moves, the coordinates to the White House, and coded disturbing images depicting violence against women. To this day, no one has been able to solve this mystery or find out who's behind all these posts. In our fourth spot, we have the deep web. The term deep web refers to the 80% of the internet that is inaccessible through normal internet browsers. And there's a reason why. The stuff on the deep web can be traumatizing. One person stumbled upon an online bid. When the bidding ended, it was revealed that they were bidding on a woman who was tied to a chair. The winning bidder could type what they wanted to do to her. 
Turns out that this was a torture murder live stream. Moving on to number three, we have Mariana Mortegard Glesgorf. Excuse me, I know I just butchered that name. But this is apparently one of the scariest and most haunted videos on the internet. This video was posted on YouTube in 2008 and immediately unsettled everyone who watched it. it. Starts off with some man just staring into the camera, then out of nowhere, he starts laughing maniacally. In the next section of the video, we see a man with weird, creepy eyeballs. Now, the full video is two minutes long. However, you are warned never to watch the full video. It is said that if you do, it'll drive you insane. In fact, the entire video was apparently removed off of YouTube after 100 people took out their own eyeballs after watching this video and then mailed them to YouTube's main office in San Bruno. To this day, we don't know who created this video, why, and who's that man in the video. In our second spot, we have the killer. A number of killers have apparently used forum sites like 4chan to ask some pretty disturbing questions and tease others. On 4chan, one person discovered a post where someone asked what they keep in their freezer. This person replied with a picture of dead body parts in their freezer. Another killer decided to play a little game with some people on 4chan. He said that there was a missing person, and if they guessed who it was correctly, then they would give them a freebie and then coordinates to where her body was buried. And I don't know if she was ever found. And in our number one spot today, we have how to be a serial killer. Now, this is the name of a website, thankfully no longer active, that used to teach people how to become a serial killer. The site was full with detailed explanations on how to kill people and get away with it. Eventually, the site was removed, but when you searched for it, a message popped up saying, how to be a serial killer has been removed. If you're really interested in killing someone, why don't you start with yourself? Oh, uh, excuse me? No. Okay, sorry. Uh, we still need to know who created this site and why. Kicking off the list at number 10, passing asteroids. I say passing because ideally that's how we'd like to greet them. Right? But really, it's out of our hands. On August 16th, 2020, for example, a small asteroid shot past our planet, barely 3,000 kilometers above Earth's surface. So yeah, on paper, sure, that's far away, but when it comes to asteroids that could wipe out all life on Earth, that's dangerously close. We might not even see it coming either. This August asteroid was only discovered a few hours after it made its close approach to Earth. Yeah, so we're kind of late to the party. I'll have you know that even if it did hit Earth, it wouldn't be entirely catastrophic. It would just suck a bit for a specific circle of people on the planet. It's like world roulette. We're like, ooh. NASA does their best to monitor these events, but would you want to know if an asteroid was going to hit? I wouldn't want to know. Number nine, aliens? Yeah. Back in 2017, a $22 million defense program was put in place called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Real life. This is where, this is news. Here we go. Its purpose was to study military encounters with UFOs. Yeah, remember when UFOs were on the news and like nobody cared, honestly, at, at the time? What was that all about? Navy pilots were coming out with their story or stories. Eventually, come 2019, senators felt the need to be briefed on all these sightings, given the amount of them. After a vote by the Senate intelligence community in June 2020, it was agreed that UAP reports were to get added to the Intelligence Authorization Act for 2021 and onwards. That's why more and more footage is coming out these days, because these incidents were filmed ages ago, but now they're allowed to be released to the public. And according to the Times, like the Times, these 120 incidents that were studied, it turns out the US military is not responsible at all. That's, that's nice. Let's move on before I pass out. Number eight, Apophis. We thought the world was going to end in 2012. The Mayan calendar tipped us off and they even made a movie about it. Yeah, John Cusack got a paycheck because Mayans made a calendar. Isn't that odd? That's a real fact. Well, we might be seeing another disaster movie in eight years, the asteroid Apophis. Not a bad name for a movie too, Apophis. It's in the category of potentially hazardous asteroids. Potentially hazardous asteroids, nice. On April 13th, 2029, it's gonna barely miss Earth. Apparently it's gonna pass just a little bit and around two billion people will be able to witness this uh, with their naked eye. Yeah, look outside to witness our possible end. I was close, that was really close. An asteroid literally might hit us on a Friday the 13th, how odd is that? Scientists were actually unsure about if this thing was gonna hit or not, and even to this day, Earth's gravitational pull might just influence this near miss. 
might. There's a fun word in the NASA community. It's good, it might work, we'll see. Number seven, Titan life. Titan is one of Saturn's many, many moons. Saturn has 82 moons in total, so if there's any aliens hiding near Saturn, we're never gonna find them. They have numerous spots to hide. Numerous craters to pop their little alien heads in and out of. That's a lot of moons. Around 10 years ago, NASA's Cassini spacecraft detected water under its massive shell of ice on this moon. That's pretty exciting, and to quote a Cassini team member, the search for water is an important goal in our solar system exploration, and now we've spotted another place where it's abundant. Yes, we love abundant water on icy moons far away. Mm. NASA has also detected low frequency radio waves on this icy moon, and it sounds pretty eerie. As far as space mysteries go, anywhere that has water, or signs of water for that matter, that's a good start. Number six, Saturn's rings. Another Saturn one coming in hot. I know you wanted more, let's talk. She's known for her stunning rings. If you ever get the chance to look into space with a telescope, you can actually see Saturn's rings. Even a standard set of binoculars, they ought to do it. It's gotta have perfect vision, like me. They're a great mystery to scientists today, seeing as these rings were formed many, many moons ago. They're beautiful, but they're quite violent. The rings consist of particles that range in size from micrometers to, well, full-on meters. And they're mostly made up of ice, but they have some trace components of rocky material as well. In December 2016, the Cassini spacecraft actually weaved through these rings. What a mission that ought to be. It flew through, and the spacecraft's radio and plasma wave science instrument was able to pick up the sound of what crossing one of these rings sounds like. And uh, yeah, spoiler alert, it's haunting. It sounds like deep space nonsense. It starts off tame, sounds like, you know, classic staticky space, but when more and more particles hit the craft, eh, the noises increase. There's much we don't know about Saturn's history, but what, what the planet sounds like, that's, that's a good start. It's an oddly satisfying start. Number five, our moon. The old man made a cheese in the sky, or something like that, right? Our moon has been here for quite a while, and sadly, it's moving away from us slowly. But we'll still have her presence, her grace, her beauty, we'll still have it for a while longer. Our moon helps us surf giant waves, okay? She helps us keep everything balanced here on Earth due to the gravitational pull that it has. And while we can't really think of an Earth without the moon, was there ever a time where that was the case? Where did it actually come from? 100 million years after the solar system was formed, our moon showed up. Maybe she heard the commotion, maybe she got a little FOMO, and then floated into our system to see what's going on. But right now, our best guess is collision theory. Yeah, perhaps the moon formed during a collision between Earth and another planet the size of Mars or something equivalent, and the debris from the impact collected in orbit around Earth, and then boom, now we got a bright ball of cheese to wish upon. Thank you. Thanks, solar system. Number four, the back door. What lies at the end of our solar system? Is it like the Truman Show? Just a big wall with one door they have to walk through and look around and then now your life's over? I don't know, you're in heaven? We have no idea, but we do know what the edge of our solar system sounds like. Yeah, this is an audio graph of the Voyager's plasma wave science observation that lasted several months between 2012 and 2013. These readings are important because this is the moment scientists believe the Voyager left our solar system's heliopause, making it the first ever human-made object to leave our solar system. That's amazing. Now it's just drifting in deep space. We have no idea where it's gonna end up. If you were thinking about leaving our solar system, well, this is what it's gonna sound like. Number three, the Skull Asteroid. Yeah, as if asteroids weren't already scary enough, now we need to observe one that looks like a scary skull literal Halloween ornament floating through the cosmos. Awesome. Asteroid 2015 TB145. This object was captured using the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico on October 30th, 2015. And NASA says that it's likely a dead comet. Yeah, a dead comet in the shape of a skull discovered a day before Halloween. Is this real life? Is this a bit? This can't be real. This asteroid passed Earth on Halloween night, and it was also pretty close. I'm not gonna lie, this thing was around 300,000 miles away, which is just a little further than the distance from Earth to the moon. That's how close it was. The asteroid flew by Earth again on November 11th, 2018, but luckily this time it was much further away, so we're good. <laughs> but for a minute there, 
Whew, almost weren't. Trick or treat, oh, number two. Uranus tilts. Yeah, haha, ha, jokes aside, I said it. Okay, great, let's move on. You best believe I've had about 20 jokes ready about Uranus, but you know what? This is a serious topic, so now we gotta get serious. We're still trying to figure out why Uranus rotates on its side, while every other planet in our solar system has their axis pointing upwards. Uranus's tilt is 98 degrees, so there's long periods of time, like 40 years long I'm talking, where the north or south pole will just face the sun directly. That's a perfect place to get a very specific tan. Other planets in our solar system have a prograde rotation, or they go counterclockwise depending on which way we're looking at it. But Venus has a retrograde rotation. But why? How did this start? So far, a leading theory is that something massive hit this planet. Early on in their planet life, scientists believed Uranus was hit by a meteor and then completely threw it off course. Or it collided with the moon or Earth or something. Maybe we're responsible. I feel like we're responsible. <laughs> Sorry about Uranus. And finally, number one, gamma bursts. Our sun is hot, she is bumping, she keeps us alive, and somehow I'm still pale. But what if she decides to act up, then what? The northern lights are a fun result from cosmic activity, but can we handle any more than that? When we look at extinction level events, like say, I don't know, a meteor hitting our planet, we can bounce back from that, like humans. Dinosaurs, eh, not so lucky. Maybe not them, but humans, with bigger arms, we have a fighting chance. When it comes to gamma rays hitting the planet, no chance of bouncing back from that. That's the end of everything. Unless you're the Incredible Hulk, you're not gonna have a pleasant time. Gamma rays happen when stars explode in distant galaxies. Light and energy just shoots out, along with radio waves, neutrinos, gamma rays, of course, just cosmic confetti of all shapes and sizes. All blasted at your fresh little face. All that good space stuff. But these gamma rays, they travel light years through space. If they were to hit Earth, our ozone would be toast forever. We would be engulfed in a chemical smog forever. Let's just hope that one star that's really close to our planet keeps calm and carries us on. That sounds great. Starting off this countdown, we have Cicada 3301. Now this is one of the most famous internet mysteries of all time. So it all started in 2012 when a mysterious organization, Cicada 3301, posted a weird message on 4chan. According to the message, there was a secret hidden within their posted image, and they were recruiting highly intelligent individuals to try and solve it. They said that solving this would lead them on the road to finding them, and that they looked forward to meeting those that solved it. Well, it turns out that by opening the image file in a text editing app, a string of characters would appear. When decoded, it led users to a website with even more weird messages. Some say that they solved the mystery. Others say that those who completed the puzzle are recruited for something and are never heard from again. What are they recruited for though? That's what I would like to know. In our ninth spot, we have Heaven's Gate. This was a creepy and popular American religious cult on the internet that believed in UFOs. In 1997, police found 39 members of the cult dead inside of a house. Apparently, the members took their lives in order to ascend and board an extraterrestrial spacecraft and go to another planet. They were all found wearing arm patches that read Heaven's Gate Away Team. To this day, the website is still up and running, and no one knows who's running it. Now, in 2015, the administrators behind the website did do an email interview. In the interview, they called themselves TELA, which stands for the evolutionary level above humans. They claim that the dead members are actually alive and have transcended their human bodies and that they will come back eventually. To this day, their identity still remains unknown. In our eighth spot, we have Chip Chan. This is one internet mystery that has always left me unsettled. Chip Chan is the name given to a Korean woman that was discovered in a 4chan webcam thread in 2008. It immediately caught the attention of a number of people because the footage revealed this woman sleeping in unusual positions for long periods of time at unusual times of day. In fact, at first, people thought that she was dead. She also sleeps in weird positions like on a chair or on the floor. After doing further investigation, users found that this woman believes that a mind control weapon was implanted into her ankle bone and under her left eyebrow. This chip is said to control her and that's what's making her sleep all the time. She also claims that she is being held by a corrupt officer named P and that she installed these webcams into her home so that she can see what happens to her when she's sleeping. This story is just so freaking creepy and I don't think it's ever been solved. 
In our seventh spot today, we have Kanye Quest. Yeah, not Kanye West, Kanye Quest. Kanye Quest 3030 is an RPG game that was released in 2013. Now it seems just like a silly game. It centers around Kanye West, who on his way to take out trash, travels through a wormhole and into the future. He then has to take down an evil dictator. And you got Tupac, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre in it, and you can have a rap battle with them. Now the game seems pretty harmless. That was until a player found out the game's dark secret. At one point in the game, you can interact with a displayed message. It seems like gibberish at first, until people realized it said, ascend and worship the based god. Further on in the game, you are asked to enter a prompt, and you can type anything you want. But if you type ascend, the whole game changes and you're put in this secret area. Eventually, players got to a screen that congratulated them on being an open-minded and curious thinker. They then instructed the player to not tell anyone about what they found. Out. It then asks if you wish to participate. If you click yes, then they give you instructions on an exercise that you need to complete. Furthermore, players discovered a QR code that led to a now defunct website. In the end, it was discovered that the game has been tied to the religious cult of Ascensionism and to a mysterious company, Ascension Records. The true meaning of the secret of this game has remained unsolved to this day. Coming in at number six, we have Jack Frozy. Now, there are a number of creepy pastas out there about someone dying and then their loved ones receive phone calls or Facebook messages or texts from the dead person. Well, this actually happened in real life. Jack Frozy was a 32 year old man from Dunmore, Pennsylvania. In June of 2011, he died suddenly and unexpectedly from a heart arrhythmia. Five months after Jack's death, his friend received an email from Jack's account with the subject line, I'm watching. Soon his family started getting emails from Jack as well. Now, of course, they didn't believe it to be Jack for a second, but whoever it was, they knew intimate details regarding his friends and family, details only Jack would know. To this day, no one knows who sent these emails. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with GhostNet. This is the name given to a large scale cyber spying operation uncovered in 2009. In fact, it has been described as one of the most extensive operations ever uncovered. Yet, no one knows who was behind this operation. So in 2009, it was found that an organization infiltrated over 1,000 computers across 103 countries. They did this by sending emails with attachments or links to individuals or organizations. By opening the file, the user would unknowingly download a virus onto their computer that allowed the hackers to gain complete control of their computers so they could read and send data and even turn on someone's webcam and microphone. Like I said, no one knows who was behind this. But since the network originated in China, some believe that the Chinese government had something to do with this. Others believe that the CIA or the Russian government were behind this. In our fourth spot, we have the most mysterious song on the internet. This is the title given to a song with an unknown name, sung by an unknown artist with an unknown origin. It all started when a man named Darius came across an old cassette and liked a song on there and wanted to find the name of it. Him and his sister couldn't figure it out, so they turned to the internet for help. Soon, thousands of music enthusiasts came forward to try and figure out this song. To this day, no one has figured out who's behind this song, hence why it's given the name the most mysterious song on the internet. What's even weirder is when the song was shared online, a number of people recognized it. They said that they have heard it before, they just can't put their finger on it. In our third spot, we have Markovian Parallax Denigrate. This mystery started back in the 90s and revolves around a number of weird and confusing posts that appeared to be complete gibberish. Back then, there was something called Usenet, which was like a forum. On August 5th of 1996, hundreds of weird messages started appearing on Usenet. No one knew what they meant, but people knew that they were related because each post had one thing in common. The subject line read Markovian Parallax Denigrate. Turns out that these are secret codes, but no one has been able to crack them yet. In our second spot, we have Ted the Caver. Now, some say this is merely just a creepy pasta, whereas others believe it's a true story. I'll let you decide what you want to think. 
Back in February of 2000, a man known only by the name of Ted the Caver posted about exploring an unknown virgin cave passage in the US. According to Ted and his journal entries, when him and his friend entered the cave, they found a narrow passageway with a small hole. So they drilled the hole and decided to explore it further. But as they went to explore this cave, weird things began to happen. Him and his friend heard ghastly screaming, they found weird hieroglyphs on the cave walls, and apparently encountered evil spirits in the cave that followed them home. All of this was backed up with images of him and his friend exploring the cave. The last post was on May 19, 2001, when Ted revisited the cave and said he would update everyone when he returned home. He never updated the post, making people believe that he never returned home. In fact, this mystery was so popular that a horror movie was made off of it. And in our number one spot today, we have the Lake City Quiet Pills. Now, this is another very weird and wild one. So it starts with the death of a Reddit user, Religion of Peace. He was a moderator for the subreddit Jailbait, which is disturbing on its own. But he mainly posted about his military experience and guns, and would encourage posts to get people to upload pictures on his website, LakeCityQuietPills.com. But as many investigated his site, they realized that hidden inside the site's HTML code was a motto. It said, and I quote, dispensing Lake City quiet pills to lousy bastards in need of permanent rest since 1968. It continued on saying, Shade is maintaining the calendar and access to the file dump. Angel has the job postings for EU and Asia. We aren't sending anyone to me. No one. Don't ask for listings. Then what followed were what appeared to be job listings. Here are some. Immediate need, 8 to 10 Chinese Korean, fluent Korean dialect accent details after contact 12 week half pay and they went on to say that they needed Arabic French people no papers no problems a lot of people then theorized that this site was used as a way to pass assassination jobs back and forth as people dug further they found a government-owned bullet factory in Missouri called Lake City ammunition plant Meaning, the quiet pills that they're referring to are bullets. I mean, yeah, you get shot by one of those and you'll be quiet. So maybe this website was a front for some illegal activity. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have radio waves. Every day, thousands of times a day, Earth receives signals that come from outer space by way of radio waves. These radio waves come in super fast bursts that are only a few thousandths of a second long. So this may not seem like much, and we could just kind of chalk it up to some weird space thing we don't quite understand. But the weirdest part that makes it all the more intriguing is that some of them appear to repeat. One important clue about these bursts is in how they arrive. Higher frequency radio waves appear first, and then they are followed by ones with a lower frequency in a sort of falling or cascading effect. This is likely what is known as the propagation effect, which means that the original event, whatever is causing these radio signals to be sent out in the first place, emits all the signals at once, but the lower frequency ones travel at a slower pace just slightly, slightly slower than the higher ones, thus we have this delayed arrival to Earth. If this is the case, this means that wherever the signals are coming from is very, very far away. This is because it would take quite a significant amount of time for this effect to show up as clearly as it does on our telescopes, and if that's the case, and we are still able to detect them after all of those intervening millions of years of travel through space, then they must have started out as very, very bright. This was a really long way of saying, hey, we get these radio bursts every single day and we have no idea what they are or where they come from, but they just might be millions of years old. Theories as to what could be causing the waves ranges from exploding stars to colliding neutron stars or comets smashing into neutron stars or maybe something I'll absolutely never understand like evaporating black holes or quote, oscillating primordial cosmic strings. In our number nine spot today, we have the origins of life. Where did life originate from? I know many people have their own theories and beliefs, and I'm not here to discredit or judge any of those. I'm just here to say that we have no evidence to prove anyone's theory. We simply just don't know, so at this point, your guess is as good as mine. Many people choose to believe that life began here on Earth, especially considering we have no evidence of life existing anywhere else in the parts of the universe that we've observed, but scientists aren't quite convinced. It's very true that life could have begun somewhere else and ended up being brought to Earth on a meteorite or perhaps some other sort of cosmic collision is what landed 
started life here. Scientists aren't even exactly sure which area of science would be able to find these answers, and even if they could agree, who knows where we should even start looking. The only reason this mystery gets a little eerie is, since we don't know where life began or how it originated, who knows exactly who or what else is out there in terms of life forms. This is exactly what leads us into our next point. In our number 8 spot today we have, where is everybody? Perhaps one of the biggest space mysteries out there is, are we alone in the universe? Are we the only intelligent life that exists? Where the heck is everyone else? We can all hypothesize and make educated guesses, but at the end of the day, no one really knows because to know, you have to have proof and evidence. There are many, many theories as to why we haven't found any extraterrestrial friends yet, and they range from the belief that we are the only intelligent life in the universe, to the belief that we are a nursery planet right now that is protected from other advanced civilizations so as to not disrupt our development. I love this idea, we just have an alien babysitter, what is that? A weirdly comforting thought. Despite all these theories, at the end of the day we don't know where aliens are or if they exist at all. A Pennsylvania State University team that was being led by Dr. Jason Wright made an astonishing point, however, when they said that there is no mystery, we have searched only a fraction of the galaxy equivalent to the water in a hot tub compared to all of Earth's oceans. This is certainly something to consider. As Douglas Adams puts it, quote, space is big. You won't believe just how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. In our number 7 spot today, we have dark energy. Astronomer Edwin Hubble, whom the Hubble telescope is obviously named, named after, in the 1920s made the discovery that the universe is not static and in fact it is actually expanding. He was studying a supernova when he realized that the universe was not only expanding, but was expanding at a much higher rate now than it was a long time ago. This discovery was groundbreaking because prior to it, scientists believed that the gravity of matter would end up at least slowing the expansion of the universe, if not causing it to contract on itself. Since this switched up everyone's way of thinking so much, there then began to be the debated topic of dark energy. This is the idea that there is this like inexplicable force that is pulling all of the cosmos apart at speeds that are only increasing. Dark energy is said to make up 73% of the universe, but we still haven't been able to pin it down and directly detect it. Basically what I'm saying is that we're pretty sure it's there, but we have no idea what it is despite it making up such a large portion of our universe. So. That's just a little terrifying. In our number six spot today, we have dark matter. Okay, if dark energy and all the mysteries it holds weren't enough, now we've got dark matter to talk about, and I'm sorry, but there's just no more answers with this one. In the 1960s and the 1970s, scientists began to hypothesize that there might be more mass in the universe than we can see. After this, an astronomer at the Carnegie Institute of Washington named Vera Rubin was studying the speeds of stars at different locations within galaxies. What she found was that there was essentially no difference difference in the velocity of the stars, whether they were closer to the center of the galaxy or further out. This was an interesting discovery because that defied the most basic laws of physics, right? Like applying what we knew at that point, it would have made more sense for the stars on the outskirts of the galaxy to orbit more slowly than those at the center. In order to explain this, astronomers began discussing the phenomena of dark matter. It can't be seen, but it has a mass, which is how it is able to be detected because it exerts some sort of gravitational pull on regular matter. Dark matter makes up 23% of the universe, and if you remember, dark energy accounts for 73%, so that leaves us with a whole whopping 4% of matter that we understand better and know more about, which is things like humans, planets, stars, that sort of thing. The other 96% of what the universe is made of is one of space's greatest mysteries that uh, we just can't seem to figure out yet. So, I don't know. I'm scared. In our number 5 spot today we have the galactic recoil. One of the galaxies that sits closest to us here in the Milky Way is the galaxy we refer to as the Andromeda Galaxy and within it we have found this strangely shaped cluster of stars that has been stumping researchers for quite a while. Recently it is possible that a newer theory might have actually found an answer to this mystery, but the answer is more terrifying than the mystery itself. This question has been around for decades and this new research might also help researchers to better understand how how galaxies grow by feeding on each other. Basically, every galaxy has a supermassive black hole at their center. 
I know, it's terrifying, but it's just the way it is and there's nothing we can do about it. So this new study is showing that when two galaxies collide, which yes, also unfortunately happens, the supermassive black holes and their cores then release a huge, devastating, powerful kickback. It's like the recoil from a shotgun. This new study and research is now showing and suggesting that this kickback may be so strong that it can knock millions of stars into like different wonky, strange orbits and then that would be the answer as to why this star cluster behaves so strangely. Basically, the collision and the waves won't affect the stars in the galaxy directly, but then the recoil is going to throw the remaining supermassive black hole through space. And when I say throw, I'm talking about this black hole traveling at millions of miles per hour. And we also have to remember that supermassive black holes have a mass that can be millions and even billions times that of the sun. This means that the kickback could be powerful enough for them to entirely escape the galaxy. And if they don't, they may pull the orbit of the stars around them, thus creating this wonky situation we've been wondering about. Of course, that was the most basic way of explaining it because, I mean, I'm not an expert, I'm a YouTuber, but uh, it's crazy. In our number four spot today, we have asteroids. Every year, this is a prediction that comes up, and it's the sort of cosmic event that makes people believe that this is the year an apocalypse inducing asteroid is going to collide with Earth. Of course, scientists work diligently to detect anything that might be on a path to Earth and might threaten our wonderful planet, but like anything, sometimes things slip through and we get a frightening surprise, like what happened just a few years ago. On August 16th, 2020, just after midnight in Eastern US time, a small asteroid buzzed past our planet just 2,950 kilometers above Earth's surface. That may seem like a far way away, but in terms of asteroids, that is a miss that is too close for comfort. Here's the worst part. The asteroid was only discovered a few hours after it made its close approach to Earth. The good news is that this is because of the size, because it wasn't a relatively huge one, and if it hadn't have missed and ended up colliding with Earth, it either would have broken up in the atmosphere or it wouldn't have been super catastrophic world ending sort of a thing. What I'm trying to say is that while it is something we are tracking and keeping tabs on, there's a lot of sky and space to cover and you never know what might slip through the cracks. In our number three spot today we have Bye Bye Galaxies. Okay, did you know that galaxies can die? I didn't until I learned about this. It is said that the universe is about 13.8 billion years old. When it was just a youngster at only 3 billion years old, it was going through an extremely important period in its development, and this was the most prolific period of star birth in its entire history. New research from NASA using the Hubble Space Telescope, along with the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array in northern Chile, they gazed towards the cosmic objects in this period, and that is when they found something that hadn't been seen before. Six different dead galaxies. By this, I mean that they had run out of the cold hydrogen needed to make stars, and without the fuel for stars, these galaxies were basically running on empty. At this point in our universe, all of the galaxies should have been forming tons of stars. I mean, ours certainly was, as can be seen by a glance towards the night sky, especially in areas that aren't clouded by light pollution. This discovery is absolutely fascinating, but it's led us to a new question we didn't even know we had before. What led these galaxies to this point, and what happened to all of the cold gas in them so early on. The six galaxies lived fast, hot lives, but we aren't sure what went wrong. Lead author and assistant professor of astronomy at the University of Massachusetts, Amherst, Kate Whitaker, proposed several potential explanations and gave us insight into the future of the studies when she said, quote, did a supermassive black hole in the galaxy center turn on and heat up all of the gas? If so, the gas could still be there, but now it's hot. Or it could have been expelled and now it's being prevented from accreting back into the galaxy. Or did the galaxy just use it all up and the supply is cut off. The questions really are endless and it's unclear whether we'll ever know the answers for sure or not. In our number two spot today we have how big is the universe? Okay, so we have our sun, which is a star that is surrounded by, we'll say, nine planets, and that makes up our solar system. Our solar system is located within the Milky Way galaxy, and it is currently believed that there are about 100 to 400 billion stars within our galaxy, and at least that many planets, but likely more. That's a lot of planets and stars floating around in our galaxy alone, but that's not it. In our observable universe, the things we can tangibly see, there are about 150 billion other galaxies. Galaxies. And that's just what we can see. That number could technically go on for, well, 
That's exactly the thing. We don't know how much that number could grow, but it's theorized that the number is 250 times higher than the 150 billion that we can see. That's an incomprehensible amount. And that's just galaxies. When we take that knowledge and apply it to how many solar systems that would mean and how many planets, I can totally understand why we may never know for sure just how big the universe is, but it really does have this ability to make you feel exceptionally small. This coupled with the theories of how the universe is infinite and always expanding and things get even more convoluted. Just trying to wrap my head around it is a struggle in itself. In our number one spot today we have, how will the universe end? Perhaps a morbid question, but it's a good one. I mean, all good things must come to an end and that might include the universe itself, but maybe it doesn't. I mean, we don't know. That's the whole point of this video. There are theories such as the Big Crunch, which suggests that the expansion of the universe, which has been ongoing since the Big Bang, will eventually slow to a stop and then the universe will give way to the force of gravity, essentially just pulling everything, planets, galaxies, it all, into a single dense point until everything is just wiped out. There are other theories out there such as the Big Freeze, the Big Bounce, or the Big Rip, which sounds the most terrifying of them all, although I'm not particularly interested in any of the options so far. The good news is that this is all billions and billions of years away, so we won't be around to find out regardless, but when it does happen, it'll be a pretty spectacular event. Kicking off the list at number 10, Alzheimer's. Roughly 500,000 new cases of Alzheimer's are diagnosed each year. Whenever we hear about somebody developing it, more often than not, they're older, right? We often make jokes if someone forgets something like, oh, but you're getting older, Alzheimer's are kicking in. It's, you know, it's common at this point, but we still don't know why or where it comes from. Alzheimer's is an irreversible degeneration of the brain that causes disruptions in memory, personality, cognition. Every three seconds in the world, somebody develops dementia. Annual healthcare spending adds thousands if you're suffering from Alzheimer's, and more than 16 million Americans are providing unpaid care for somebody with Alzheimer's right now. It's the fifth leading cause of death for those 65 and older. There's early onset and late onset Alzheimer's. There's two categories. There's no cure for either. Scientists are still trying to figure out what causes the disease, but so far, a leading theory is that Alzheimer's is caused by a pileup of these proteins called amyloids, which harm the brain. This is a theory, but medicine that clears amyloids from the brain aren't doing the trick. Hopefully in a future video, we break down the cure to Alzheimer's, but until then, Alzheimer's remains a biological mystery. Hence why we're here. Number nine, but why? And then I talk about Holes right after. We'll try and lighten up the mood here just a little bit. Here's a fun fact scientists aren't sure why we have an anus, a butt, the whole. He We're so obsessed with them in pop culture and we don't even know why we have them. Yeah, next time Sir Mix a Lot sings about liking big butts, somebody pull him aside and just ask him why, you know? Be like, Mr. Mix, why do you like big butts? Why can't you lie about them? Catherine Rue, science writer from The Atlantic, explains more of this biological mystery in their study titled, The Body's Most Embarrassing Organ is an Evolutionary Marvel. Great title, couldn't have nailed it more. Before the anus came around town, animals would eat and excrete through the same way. They would just, mm, and then spit it out. Then all of a sudden, butts come into the mix, the sir mix a lot, and now animals can become bigger, stronger, and stinkier. We still have no idea which creature had the first anus. That's a sick title, I want that. I really want that. The first guy with a hole. It's like, look at this dude, look at this little caterpillar. Little I have an ass dude. Catherine Wu explains in that report, which I highly recommend that you read for yourself, of course I did after reading that title. She said that it's hard to study something that must be millions of years old and also doesn't fossilize. Yeah, there's no bones in your butt. That'd be, that'd be weird, it's a hard, big old hard butt. I've talked about butts too much, let's just put this behind us, you know? Leave it in the rear, put it up our, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm out of puns, let's move on. Number eight, Ebola's origins. I know we're all a little preoccupied with some other stuff right now, but here's another fun mystery to add to that list. Ebola, we're at the point now with Ebola that we're treating monkeys. We're out of the woods for the most part, panic-wise, but scientists are still trying to figure out where this thing even came from in the first place. The first known case of Ebola occurred in 1976 in Sudan in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Over 600 people got sick and now come 2005, we're trying to find its origins. More than 1,000 animals in Central Africa were tested. We tested 679 bats, 222 birds, 129 small vertebrates, and the only animal found with Ebola was bats. Specifically, three types of fruit bat. It's it's still unclear whether bats are reservoirs for the virus or if this was a bat infection that also affected people. Hence the mystery. We're still trying to figure that out, believe me. Number seven, the appendix. It's been around for quite some time, that's for sure, but are we even sure why we have an appendix anymore? This organ causes a lot of discomfort. More often than not, you'll have it removed and it's now a standard procedure. It's so common, but why is removing an organ from your body common? Why are we just like, oh, you're doing that thing? Great, I've heard about that. That's your time. No, this is weird. We're taking a thing out of our body, like, and then 
stitching it, ugh. But what scientists do know about this whole process is that our plant-eating ancestors for sure needed it. They needed an appendix for digestion, but cut to us, we still have it because we're at that point in evolution in the middle where we don't need it anymore. That's the leading theory here. But another theory that's more recent is that we have two types of bacteria in our colon. A lot of ass talk in this one. The nasty type causes infections and harms tissues and all that bad stuff, but other types of bacteria are good, as odd as that sounds. It doesn't harm the colon, and when the subject takes antibiotics, they get rid of bacteria in the colon. The appendix job is to store good bacteria when the colon is being flushed out. That way, the good stuff can still stay in control. Still mysterious, but the brilliant science scientists at the University of Arizona are getting to the bottom of it. I had one more pun, I waited for this one. There we go, now I'm done, I swear. Number six, blushing. Okay, picture this, you're standing near your locker, it's high school, Blake rolls up on some Heelys, does a cool hockey stop, everybody looks over, he puts his longboard to the side, pulls out flowers, and Roller Blake is now asking you to prom. You immediately start to blush, right? You're feeling all that hot, panicky, your face gets hot. This is a sign of embarrassment, or you're happy, or you're confused. Uh, what is blushing, and why is it so damn obvious all the time? Let's talk about it. The origins of blushing, and whether or not humans started doing it to maximize personal gain is the true mystery here. Charles Darwin was scratching his head over this. Why do humans call their own bluff when they lie? but animals don't. One leading theory is that humans did it to submit authority, but over time, as our social interactions changed and became more complex, blushing was a behavioral trait that represented guilt or embarrassment. Scientists have noted that women blush more than men, and we think it's because women would usually show their honesty to men by blushing, right? We're looking at this in a reproductive, animalistic way. They would blush so that they can produce an offspring. That's like the OG origins, but the other stuff we still don't know about. Hence the mystery, hence this list. Number five, lying. Okay, I think it's time to admit that we all lie. Just a little. It's Kanye West lies in jail part two. We all liars. So good. Robert Feldman, University of Massachusetts psychologist, he words it really well. He says when it comes to white lies, we're trying not so much to impress other people, but rather to maintain a view of ourselves that is consistent with the way that they would like us to be. Which is a great way of saying, I just lied to you. I'm gonna start using that one next time I bail on my friends and they get mad. I'm just gonna be like, look guys, I wanted to come, but I needed to uphold the way that you view me as the guy who always bails last minute. Just gotta keep it going or else who am I, right? If I didn't bail, then I'm a liar. Like what's, what's your really, what's your true agenda? We don't know exactly why we lie, but it starts when we're young. Children start lying at the age of four to six. Now this, weirdly, is a good thing. This means that they're learning. Humans lie to avoid hurting themselves or to avoid getting in trouble, but it's not always primal. Sometimes we lie to make others feel better. That's the mystery. Of course that turtleneck looks good on you. Number four, dark thoughts. Okay, we'll get a little darker for this one. We've been a little silly, now we get back to the hmm vibe. But humans, thinking about what happens to them after they die, despite how it feels, it's a normal thought. We read books about dreaming and we try and piece together every little thing that we remember, but like I talked about in part one, dreaming is also still a mystery here as well. The brain is fascinating and we're at least a little curious what happens to it after we die. From time to time, humans think of their own death. You'd be lying there at night and you're like, oh, if I was in a hospital right now, who would who would come see me? It's like, is it, is it weird? Is it bad? Is it a bad sign? No, it's, it's pretty normal. Palin Casabir, scientist and psychologist at the Center of Healthy Minds at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, believes that thinking about your own inevitable death causes anxiety for some, but others think about dying as immense clarity and wisdom. I've heard it's exactly like before you were born. If that's the case, sign me up, because I don't remember paying for my phone before then. You know what I mean? No bills before that. Just darkness, a lot of sleep, no food, and no bills. Good time. The mystery here is why we so commonly daydream of our own death. That's the what I'm really talking about here. Do you think animals had that same thought? Or are they too focused on eating and surviving to daydream who would show up at their funeral? Humans are strange. Number three, hair. To be specific, we're talking about hair you know, down in the southern, southern regions. The southern regions, the southern, southern, south, hair down, pubic hair, we're talking about pubic hair. Pubic hair is a biological mystery, and yes, even after we hit puberty, we still can't figure it out. Of course, we have many theories, but no definitive answers. So far, we believe this is a part of our evolutionary history, and it comes from a time where humans needed fur all over their bodies. Robin Weiss at the University College London made a pretty remarkable observation. At some point, our pubic hair became thicker than the rest of our hair, hair in our body. That's the mystery here. Our best guess is protection against cold or to protect the genitals during intercourse or to prevent chafing from running around and doing parkour and all that stuff. All the normal stuff. Pubic hair, still a mystery. Number two, the basking shark. Pubic hair and sharks, we got it all. Okay, on part one of this list, I went in on hammerhead sharks. A bit too hard, I'll admit, with the, with the goofy eyes. I'm doing it again, I called them goofy, sorry. If you're a hammerhead shark, 
My bad. So in part three, I have to shine the light on another shark, the basking shark. The basking shark translates to large nose sea monster and honestly, yep, pretty much nailed it. They swim through the surface of waters and search for tiny little food, plankton to be specific. Despite how big their mouths are, yeah, they eat plankton. They're just like, ah, and they eat dust. It's crazy. We'll go years without seeing one of these guys, but once we do, we're in luck because more often than not, basking sharks travel in large numbers found in both the Atlantic and the Pacific. As of 2019, basking sharks were considered endangered. Overfishing, of course, is to blame for that one. The biological mystery here in this one is not her giant mouth, of course, but the fact that the basking shark females only have one functioning ovary and it's the same every time. It's always the right one. Mystery. Yeah, the big mouth part is not the mystery you thought, eh? You really thought I was gonna say. No, that's normal. That's just, that's just shark stuff. Hashtag just sharky things. And finally, number one, blood types. A, B, A, B, and O. Those are the four main blood groups. Each can be RHD positive and each can be RHD negative. So there's actually eight groups in total. O positive is the most common while AB negative is the most rare. If you're AB negative, congratulations. You're rare and your blood is rare. Now I'm starting to sound like a vampire. When donating blood or receiving it, you need to know which type of blood you need, of course. It's important that you know which type of blood that you need. Different types fight off different infections. Now scientists believe this began around 20 million years ago. Just like the appendix, this mystery kicked off long before us. We don't really know why blood types change among us. And the reason that we're A positive or B negative, like many things in the series, is a biological mystery. Dr. Mohamed Mobayed of Promedica Hematology and Oncology Associates explains on thehealthy.com that natural selection would provide unique blood types to beat specific infections. So if you're ever wondering why our blood type is different, even in your family with the same genes, well, get in line. Lots of scientists are still trying to figure this one out. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have how big is the universe? Okay, so we have our sun, which is a star that is surrounded by, we'll say nine planets, and that makes up our solar system. Our solar system is located within the Milky Way galaxy, and it is currently believed that there are about 200 other solar systems in our galaxy. That's a lot of planets floating around in our galaxy alone, but that's not it. In our observable universe, the things we can tangibly see, there's about 150 billion other galaxies. And that's just what we can see. That number could technically go on for, well, that's exactly the thing. We don't know how much that number could grow, but it's been theorized that the number is 250 times higher than the 150 billion we can see. That's like an incomprehensible amount. And that's just galaxies. When we take that knowledge and apply it to how many solar systems that would mean and how many planets that would mean, I can totally understand why we may never know for sure just how big the universe is, but this really does have the ability to make you feel exceptionally small. In our number nine spot today, we have energetic cosmic rays. Energetic cosmic rays are described as high energy protons and atomic nuclei that move through space at nearly the speed of light. There are some that originate from supernovas, but there are some that originate from outside of our galaxy, and those ones have scientists wondering where they are coming from and what the source of them is. As these cosmic rays flow into our solar system, their paths are bent by the magnetic fields of both the sun and the earth. A Upon impact with Earth's atmosphere, these rays produce a shower of secondary particles. Some of these particles do end up reaching Earth, but most are intercepted by either the magnetosphere or the heliosphere. The strongest cosmic rays are extremely powerful and they can have energies over 100 million times greater than a man-made collider. If you're wondering why you should care about this space mystery, it's because these things have the power to cause our digital systems to crash and in our ever increasing digital world that would cause some major disruptions to our life. This is why we care about how many of their origins remain a complete mystery that has scientists stumped. And also because shouldn't we just know where these things that are bombarding Earth's atmosphere are coming from? In our number 8 spot today we have what is dark energy? Astronomer Edwin Hubble, whom the Hubble telescope is obviously named after, in the 1920s made the discovery that the universe is not static and in fact is actually 
expanding. He was studying a supernova when he realized that the universe was not only expanding, but it was expanding at a much higher rate now than it was a long time ago. This discovery was groundbreaking because prior to this, scientists believed that the gravity of matter would end up at least slowing the expansion of the universe, if not causing it to contract. Since this switched up everyone's way of thinking so much, there then began to be the debated topic of dark energy. This is the idea that there is an inexplicable force that is pulling the cosmos apart at speeds that are only increasing. Dark energy is said to make up 73% of the universe, but we still haven't been able to pin it down directly and detect it. Basically what I'm saying is we're pretty sure it's there, but we have no idea what it is. So that's a little terrifying. In our number 7 spot today, we have what is dark matter? Okay, if dark energy and all the mysteries it holds weren't enough, now we've got dark matter to talk about, and I'm sorry, but there's no more answers with this one either. In the 1960s and 1970s, scientists began to hypothesize that there might be more mass in the universe than we can see. After this, an astronomer with the Carnegie Institution of Washington named Vera Rubin was studying the speed of stars at different locations within galaxies. What she found was that there was essentially no difference in the velocity of the stars, whether they were closer to the center of the galaxy or whether they were further out. This was an interesting discovery because that defied the most basic laws of physics, right? Like applying what we knew at that point, it would have made more sense for the stars on the outskirts of the galaxy to orbit more slowly than those at the center. In order to explain this and why this was happening, astronomers began discussing the phenomena of dark matter. It can't be seen, but it has a mass, which is how it is able to be detected because it exerts some sort of gravitational pull on regular matter. Dark matter makes up 23% of the universe, and if you remember, dark energy accounts for 73%, so that leaves us with a whopping 4% of matter that we understand better and know more about, which is matter like humans, planets, stars, and that sort of thing. The other 96% of what the universe is made of is one of space's greatest mysteries. In our number 6 spot today we have the sun. The extra hot outer atmosphere of the sun is called the corona. It extends thousands of kilometers above the visible surface of the sun and it ends up transforming into solar wind that flows throughout our solar system. The corona is usually sitting at a temperature of 500,000 to 6 million degrees celsius or 900,000 to 10.8 million degrees fahrenheit. Apparently for years, scientists have been stumped on how exactly the sun has the ability to continually reheat the corona. Astronomers have been able to narrow down all of the possibilities to energy beneath the surface and some sort of processes in the sun's magnetic field, but the exact mechanics of the coronal heating is still highly debated. Just last year in June of 2020, however, scientists did get one step closer to potentially being able to answer this question. There were tiny bursts of energy detected called nano flares, and this might be what is responsible for the heating of the outer atmosphere. In our number five spot today, we have KIC 8462852. Ah, uh, yes the star with the most memorable name. This star, which has also been referenced as Tabby's star or the WTF star, is an F-type main sequence star which is located in the constellation Cygnus about 1,470 light years away from Earth. This star is of particular importance because of the fact that it shows unusual light shifts, which includes a 22% dimming in brightness. Basically, from our point of view, something continually blocks the star, and it likely isn't a planet because a Jupiter-sized planet would only block about 1% of a star the size of this one. So what could it possibly be? There are a few theories out there surrounding this anomaly, but none are able to fully explain what is happening here. Some believe that it is some sort of uneven ring of dust orbiting the star. Others believe that the star's luminosity fluctuates depending on the efficiency of the heat being transported to its photosphere. These are just two of the theories surrounding the star, but there are many more out there and at this point we just don't know. Hopefully once the James Webb telescope is launched, however, we will be able to get a more clear picture of what may be happening over there on KIC 8462852. In our number 4 spot today we have a supermassive black hole. Why is there a supermassive black hole at the center of most galaxies? We know that this is often the case, but we just can't figure out why. 
Every galaxy's supermassive black hole ranges in size, and we know that a stellar black hole forms from a supernova when the core of the star implodes, but we don't know how a supermassive black hole is formed. Because of the fact that the center of galaxies is where a lot of matter is boxed in, it could happen that supermassive black holes form from a cluster of regular stellar black holes, which end up all merging together because they were in a tight confined space at the center of the galaxy. There are other theories as well, such as the possibility of these supermassive black holes being formed during the Big Bang. What I'm trying to get at is we don't know how these things are formed or why they're in the center of most galaxies, or even if there were supermassive black holes before the galaxies even existed. Maybe one day we'll find out, but this might just be one of those mysteries destined to stay a secret. In our number 3 spot today we have the Space Roar. Space is a vacuum, so it should be silent, right? Well, apparently it's not. It is said that the entire universe is alive with sound, and there is a thing called space roar. Space roar apparently isn't an everyday sound, and is rather these strange radio signals that scientists have detected throughout space. These signals are so loud that they are able to drown out other signals, which can be quite annoying for the scientists who are trying to study and learn. While we know what the sound is, we don't know where it is coming from. Apparently, some people believe it was coming from the leftover radiation from early stars, and some others believe it was from the gases swirling around the galaxy in clusters, but at the end of the day, no one is really sure and it remains one noisy mystery. In our number 2 spot today we have, how will the universe end? Perhaps a morbid question, but it's a good one. I mean, all good things must come to an end and that might include our universe itself. But maybe it doesn't. I mean, we don't know. That's the whole point of this video. There are theories, such as the Big Crunch, which suggests that the expansion of the universe, which has been ongoing since the Big Bang, will eventually slow to a stop, and then the universe will give way to the force of gravity, essentially just pulling everything, planets, galaxies, it all, into a single dense point until everything is just wiped out. There are other theories out there, such as the Big Freeze, the Big Bounce, or the Big Rip, which perhaps sounds the most terrifying of them all, although I'm not particularly interested in any of these options so far. The good news is, this is all billions and billions of years away, so we won't be around to find out regardless. But when it does happen, it'll be a pretty spectacular event. In our number one spot today we have, where is everybody? Perhaps one of the biggest space mysteries is, are we alone in the universe? Are we the only intelligent life that exists? Where the heck is everyone else? We can all hypothesize and make educated guesses, but at the end of the day, no one really knows because to know, you have to have proof and evidence. There are many, many theories as to why we haven't found any extraterrestrial friends yet, and they range from the belief that we are the only intelligent life in the universe, to the belief that we are a nursery planet right now that is protected from other advanced civilizations so as to not disrupt our development. I kind of like that idea. Imagine we're just currently being taken care of by our sweet alien next door neighbors. That's a weirdly comforting thought. Despite all these theories, at the end of the day, we don't know where aliens are or if they exist at all. A Pennsylvania State University team that was being led by Dr. Jason Wright made an astonishing point, however, when they said that there is no mystery. We have searched only a fraction of the galaxy, equivalent to the water in a hot tub compared to all of Earth's oceans. This is certainly something to consider. As Douglas Adams put it, space is big, you just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have how did the galaxies form? When you look out into the night sky with a telescope, you'll see a lot of what you think are stars, but many of these points of light are actually galaxies. Galaxies are made up of stars, dust, and dark matter, which are all held together by gravity. But here's the thing, astronomers aren't exactly sure how our galaxies came to be. After the Big Bang occurred, space was mostly made up of hydrogen and helium, but galaxies as we know them weren't a thing yet. There are of course speculations as to what may have happened like gravity pulling dust and gas together to form individual stars, and then as those stars were drawn closer together, they ended up forming collections that turned into galaxies. Others think the mass of what would one day end up being galaxies was drawn together even before the stars were created. At this point in time, it's all theories and no one is quite sure what the real answer is. I mean, at the end of the day, we weren't even close to existing yet, so can you blame anyone for not having all of the answers? In our number 9 spot today we have missing stars. It would seem insane to think that a star could just vanish, right? 
But that's exactly what might be happening. For thousands of years, astronomers had accepted the idea that stars were just fixed and unchanging, but that slowly shifted into the realization that stars are physical objects and they go through major changes very slowly, like on a timeline of millions or billions of years. And when it is time for some of the most massive stars in the universe to reach the end of their lives, they go out with a bang. Almost literally. The supernova explosion is spectacular and can sometimes shine for many months and even be seen across hundreds of millions of light years. This brings us to the mystery of some stars that seemingly just vanish in the blink of an eye. According to what we know about stars, that shouldn't be the case, so where are they going? This has led to there being teams of scientists and experts who are examining both current as well as past observations of the sky to see if there is any sort of pattern when it comes to these disappearing stars, as well as to find the answers as to where they have gone. In our number 8 spot today we have the Galactic Phantom. Our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, is quite honestly pretty massive, but what if I told you there's some sort of hypothetical massive celestial cloud right in the middle of it? The Oort cloud isn't just some sort of hypothetical object, it is an entire hypothetical expanse of space that we're maybe kind of pretty sure exists. The reason we think this thing exists even though it's invisible is because of comets that follow a bizarre orbit that's in sync with something that seems to be this sort of massive celestial cloud. Everything in our solar system has a bit of a gravitational connection to this cloud, and it's possible that everything is surrounded by it. So what I'm trying to say is that we might all basically be engulfed in this cloud, but have absolutely no idea because we can't see it. If the Oort cloud doesn't exist, then what is causing these things? And if it does exist, well, what is it? In our number 7 spot today we have travel at the speed of light. Here's the thing, nothing except for maybe some sort of situation regarding quantum entanglement, which we will get into shortly, can travel faster at the speed of light. It's the fastest thing we know of. So now, here's our question. Will humans ever be able to travel at the speed of light? At the speed of light, someone could travel 299,792,458 meters per second. This means that you could circle the Earth more than 7 times in one single second. That's super fast, and if humans could travel at these speeds, it would mean that we would finally be able to travel outside of our own solar system, which would provide us immeasurable insight into what lies in the universe. In 1947, humans were able to figure out how to travel faster than the speed of sound, re jets, and while this is a much slower speed, it's still a technological advancement that should not be overlooked. As of what we know right now, the answer to this question regarding the speed of light is no, but what if that's just because we don't have the technology now? That doesn't mean we won't ever. In our number 6 spot today we have how fast is the universe expanding. For quite a few years now, the Hubble Space Telescope has been calculating the speed at which the universe is expanding, because if you didn't know, the universe is constantly expanding. I guess I should have led with that, but we're all on the same page now regardless. So recently the telescope came up with what is now accepted as the most precise measurements we've ever had. That's great and very cool, so where's the mystery? Well, this rate is a huge conflict with other independent and apparently equally as precise measurements in regard to the expansion of the early universe. Why is this an issue? Well, it means we know even less about our universe than we once thought. How terrifying. Apparently the scientific community has been reeling over this discovery because no one is really sure exactly what it means. Great, so we know nothing about the universe or the Marianas Trench. I'm starting to wonder what we do know about. In our number 5 spot today we have the shape of the universe. No, this isn't some Guillermo del Toro knockoff, no one is trying to get with the Oort cloud, it's just a super valid scientific mystery. Scientists have a lot of theories about the potential shape of the universe, but at this moment the leading one is that it is flat and infinite. Ok, that is both terrifying and cool, and it's also weird to think of the entire universe as having a shape. Here's the thing with this theory though, since the universe has a known beginning and potentially an end point, we can only observe a certain amount of it, so how are we really to know? As NASA has said in the past, all we can truly conclude is that the universe is much larger than the volume we can directly observe. There's something freaky about the people who would be the ones to have the answer, not having the answer. The universe is truly just unfathomable. In our number 4 spot today we have are there parallel universes? So everything is made up of little tiny particles, right? And there's only so many ways that those particles can be arranged in space and time. Some would call this a finite amount of ways that they could be arranged. And then the universe where all of these particles live is possibly flat and infinite. 
right? Well, at least, like we just discussed, it's theorized to maybe be. And if this is the case, do you see where I'm going? So if the universe is infinite and the particles that exist in it have a finite amount of ways that they can be arranged, surely means that somewhere out there things would have to start repeating. Right? I think at this point you see where I'm going with this. I mean, the deduction is certainly scientific, but it just seems so hard to really wrap my mind around. I guess we need to have the answer to our previous question before we can even begin looking into this one. What if there really is a reality parallel to ours? I hope the other version of me is cool and has like pink hair or something like that. In our number three spot today, we have what came before the Big Bang. Some of you out there don't like hearing about the Big Bang and that's okay, but today we are talking about it because it is likely what created the universe. I mean, really, do you have any better, more scientifically accurate theories? Okay, this isn't a fight, so let's get to the question. What happened before the Big Bang? Well, no one knows for sure because, uh, no one was around. I mean, almost nothing was around, so what could there have been? Something obviously had to exist for the Big Bang to have occurred at all, but what? Stephen Hawking apparently didn't have time for this question though because he states that not only did nothing exist, but anything that happened before the universe came into existence lacks observational consequence, so we may as well cut it all out of the theory and say that time began at the Big Bang. I like to ask big questions, but to save my brain from exploding, I might have to agree with the brilliant Mr. Hawking. In our number two spot today, we have where did the moon come from? Our moon is our beloved sidekick that really helps us keep everything balanced here on Earth due to the gravity gravitational pull that it has, and while we can't really think of an Earth without the moon, where did it actually come from? I mean, it was a hundred million years after the solar system was formed that our moon showed up, but where did it come from? The most accepted theory at the moment is the collision theory, which states that the moon formed during a collision between Earth and another small planet around the size of Mars, and that the debris from the impact collected in orbit around Earth, and boom, our bestie the moon was born. But like I said, this is just the theory that seems the most likely, but it's entirely possible that this isn't true at all because we simply just don't know for sure. Either way, whatever happened, I'm glad it did because the moon is tight and it helps us with a bunch of stuff like our axial tilt, which is super important to our lives as we know them. So shout out to the moon. In our number one spot today, we have quantum entanglement. I honestly spent so much time trying to figure out a Will Smith joke to go with this one, but I just couldn't seem to figure it out. So if you've got any, drop them down in the comments and make me laugh. In reality, quantum entanglement is the phenomenon where two different particles, which are in totally different parts of the universe, can be linked to one another and mirror the behavior and state of the other partner. This is a very interesting phenomenon for a few reasons, part of which is because it breaks some of the fundamental laws of physics. For these particles to be connected from so far away, they need to be sending signals to each other, but these signals need to travel faster than the speed of light, which is not something that was once thought possible, like we already know. Another mystery surrounding this entanglement is that objects are only supposed to be affected by their surroundings. So something happening on the other side of the universe affecting something on this side is certainly just strange. Despite these seeming impossibilities, studies suggest that quantum entanglement really does exist, and although we don't quite understand it, one day it might be very useful to us. Number 10, the planet Mercury, not the element. Of course. The mystery of Mercury will probably never be solved because we have a lot on our plate at the moment, but also because the mysteries themselves are just boggling. One, it's too close to the sun to get a proper look at it, but the tidbits of information we have been able to capture still lead to more questions. For a while, scientists believed that Mercury's terrain had been burnt up by the sun, which makes sense, but then a spacecraft discovered delicate volatiles like potassium and uranium that should have been destroyed that close to the sun. Their mere presence argued even against the well established theory that Mercury has a massive metallic core. The Messenger probe completed 4,105 orbits in order to accumulate enough data to understand how Mercury formed, but instead of answers, they just got more questions. It found evidence of volcanic activity, interacting with water, and even ice lurking in polar craters similar to that on our very own moon. How does water survive on a planet that close to the sun? Turns out there's a lot we don't know, but the scorching planet and chances are we will never truly find out. Or maybe we will. Who knows, nothing's that impossible. Number 9, The Great Attractor. 
We all know someone who thinks they're the center of the universe, you know, the world, the universe revolves around them, but I ain't talking about you, Karen, okay? The Great Attractor is a mystery that dominates our little corner of the universe. About 200 million light years away, there's a cluster in space that appears to be pulling our galaxy towards it. Its gravitational force is so strong, enough to pull our massive galaxy along for the ride wherever the heck it's going, at 600 kilometers per second, per second. So what are we waiting for? Point a telescope towards that thing and figure out what it is. But there's just one problem with that. We are in our own way. Our galaxy with all the dust, gas, and stars is sitting right in front of it, like the guy with the big head at the movie theaters that you're just too short to see over. Scientists are skeptical that we will ever find out what it is before dark matter eventually destroys it or we become a supercluster. We don't really know. Number seven, the white holes. Good versus evil, light versus dark, love versus hate. Opposites are a natural part of the universe, which is why Einstein said that if black holes exist, then white holes must too. Holes that emit light versus take it away. Thing is, we have never seen them, but just like parallel universes, they should exist, but so far we can't really prove it. Despite lack of physical evidence, logic and mathematical proof continues to support the theory to this day. If we do find one though, what would that mean? Could it mean that the light sucked into black holes does indeed transport to another point in the galaxy? Do they work as gateways? I don't know. Unless we find one, we just gotta wait. Number six, chicken or the egg? Though in this case I mean black hole? or galaxy. Unless we hopped into the TARDIS and flew all the way back to the beginning of the universe, there's no way we will discover just exactly what happened. Even then, I'm pretty sure the doctor has already crossed too many timelines, but who knows? Scientists are baffled and continue to debate as to whether black holes or galaxies were the first to form at the beginning. Chicken, meat, egg. Chris Carilli of the National Radio Astronomy Observatory in New Mexico does side mostly with black holes and I quote, the significant implication that the black holes formed first and then somehow they formed a stellar galaxy around them, unquote. But there are still studies that say different and it will probably continue to be studied and theorized for the end of time. We have no idea. We're never gonna find out. Someone build a time machine. David Tennant, rescue us. Anyways, or Tom Baker, but he's a bit old now. That's okay. Number five, Planet Nine. Surprisingly, I'm not talking about Pluto. I think it is an emotional decision as to whether you consider Pluto a planet at this point. It's not really considered a planet, but if you grew up considering it part of the rhyme, then you know, you do you. Either way, scientists apparently believe that there is another planet yet to be included in our solar system. We just don't know where it is. <laughs> like what? Planet nine or 10, depending how you look at it, is theorized to be an undiscovered planet at the fringes of our solar system. Based on the orbital trajectories of Uranus and Neptune, there are irregular, <laughs> Uranus. Uh, there are irregularities that make scientists narrow their eyes and make a thinking face like this. Konstantin Batkin, an assistant professor of the planetary science at the California Institute of Tech, believe that there is an object between five to 10 times larger than Earth trying to pull things out of whack. Maybe it's a planet, or maybe it's something else, but the search remains ongoing. Maybe one of the voyagers will find it, or maybe we should call Pluto a planet and stop breaking hearts. Number three, where the heck is everybody? Alien theories are alien theories, and who knows if the government is hiding proof that alien life has visited and is currently having coffee in the White House. Bottom line, where the heck is everybody? Our solar system is pretty much empty despite some microbes we are checking out on Venus, pretty cool. But besides that, where, where, where is everybody? How the heck am I standing here recording a video for potentially seven million of you, but I haven't had a conversation with an alien yet? I, I feel betrayed and lied to. For every grain of sand on every beach on earth, there are, this is just such an insane fact, there are, there are 100 planets that are capable of sustaining biological life. We can't 
be the only ones sitting on computers of some kind wondering the same thing, sending out signals, but it's so quiet. The Fermi paradox coined by Enric Fermi in the 1950s attempts to explain this and to date no one has been able to solve it, though it's again, not really solvable. There are two categories, one is that we are the only intelligent life and two that there is just a good reason we haven't been found, one being that they are staying hidden and actually watching us. So that's that's literally the best we got. That's it. That's it. That they're just aliens just somehow like sitting over here. I'm just like, oh, oh shit, don't, don't see me. Like, that's what it's like. They're just hiding in a corner and they've been watching us this entire time. Number one, the giant void. This one blows my mind. If I like look up at the sky, it's just insane. Ever go camping, not just in your backyard, but somewhere way up north, away from city lights, and if it's a clear night, you may look up and wonder just how the universe could be so full. But what you may not know is that behind those stars, way out there, is a giant void in space filled with nothing, except for dark matter and dark energy. Boots Void has scientists baffled. It's essentially a hole in the universe where galaxies never formed, except for maybe a couple. Around 350 million light years wide, and a billion light years from Earth, scientists can't seem to unravel why nothing formed there. It's not a black hole, though it is a black hole in space, filled with nothing. Whatever it is, it's causing scientists to reevaluate how the universe started and we may never really find the answer. One hypothesis is that the void formed when two smaller ones collided, but that's that's about all we have in terms of theories. Starting us off with number 10 are the Dropa stones. Now misleadingly, they aren't stones at all, but circular stone disks. The disks dated back around 12,000 years when they were first found in the early 60s, and there was a whopping 716 of them. Each one was around one foot in diameter, with two grooves coming from the hole in the center. They also have tiny hieroglyphic markings inside the grooves that we've never seen before. In 1962, some um Nui said he had managed to decipher the message and that it told the story of a spaceship that crashed into the cave they were found in and that the shape had dropa people in it who couldn't fix the disks and hence had to adapt to life on earth. He believed the disks came from space because one glyph in particular said this, the dropa came down from the clouds in their aircraft. Our men, women and children hid in the caves 10 times before sunrise. When at last we understood the sign language of the dropas, we realized that the newcomers had peaceful intentions. The weirdest part is that the disks were reported to have been displayed around many museums in China, but none of them have any traces of the Dropa stones ever being there. Moreover, there's no record of Sum Um Nui being a Chinese name or any link to him and the stones outside of China. So on one hand, we don't even know where the disks came from, and on the other, we don't even know who the man is who found them. Coming in at number 9 are the String of the Lights. In 2005, Leroy Chiao, a former NASA astronaut, was on a spacewalk when he saw a strange formation of lights pass him. He said as the sun started rising, he looked in the opposite direction and saw a line of five lights. They flew by quickly in an echelon formation, with the second light being slightly out of line. He himself had no idea what they were, and he speculated that they were a constellation of satellites or bright lights actually on Earth. One aerospace engineer called James Smith theorized what Leo saw may have been squid fishing boats off the coast of South America. They use bright lights to attract the squid and they usually appear on images from weather satellites so the option is plausible. Either way to see that in space would have been truly something. At number 8 we have the UFO sighting. So back in 2015, NASA was accused of stopping their live feed from the International Space Station just as the UFO came into sight. It's hard to tell in the video but a tiny grey circular object rises and then disappears in the footage right before the cutoff. I mean it could also totally not be a UFO, but it's still an unidentified flying object, so make of that what you will. Dr. Brian O'Leary, an ex NASA astronaut, said there's abundant evidence that we're being contacted and that civilizations have been visiting us for ages. Dr. Edgar Mitchell, the sixth person on the moon, said there has been crashed craft and bodies recovered. We aren't alone in the universe, they've been coming here for a long time. These are their words, not mine. Filling another seven slot is Oumuamua, or its official 
official name A slash 2017 UI. In 2017, the Pan Stars 1 telescope saw something zoom into our solar system. It's the first object ever that came from outside our solar system. At first, they thought it was an asteroid or a comet due to its orbit, but they concluded it was from interstellar space. As soon as they found it, multiple telescopes around the globe focused in on it for three whole days. It was a rotating object the size of a football field, literally it was 10 times longer than it was wide and it changed in brightness dramatically. It seemed to be a long cigar shaped object with a reddish hue that came from millions of years of radiation from cosmic rays and it spun on its axes every 7.3 hours. Its Hawaiian name Oumuamua means a messenger that reaches out from the distant past which is pretty fitting if you ask me. Now astronomers have figured out that the object came from the direction of Vega which is a star in the Lyra constellation. But given that Oumuamua is travelling at 85,700 miles per hour, it would have taken a long time to travel that distance and Lyra obviously isn't in the same place it was 300,000 years ago so we really have no idea where it really originates from. We're trying to track it for as long as possible, it passed Mars and Jupiter's orbit and it recently just passed Saturn's in January of 2019. It's en route to the Pegasus constellation and to be out of ours for a very long time. Now at number 6 is the music. In May of 1969, the crew of Apollo 10 heard some sort of outer space type music as they passed over the far side of the moon. They had been cut off from contact with Houston so the three of them listened to this alone and when communication channels reopened they didn't mention the incident because they were worried the land crew would be concerned about their psychological state. The noise sounds like a low frequency whistling noise. For one hour the astronauts and the recording talk about the weird tune but can come up with no explanation for it. Some say maybe it was an alien orchestra or the sound of a vessel nearby, while radio technicians guess it's probably from signal interference between the lunar modules and the command modules VHF radios. Which probably is the right answer, I'm not gonna lie. Just doesn't sound like an alien orchestra. <laughs> Coming in at number 5 is the green orb. Now Major Gordon Cooper was orbiting the earth in the Mercury capsule as part of the Mercury missions. However during the mission he said he witnessed a green orb coming towards him. He quickly called mission control and started the emergency procedures but the orb then randomly just disappeared. Even a tracking station in Muchy Australia picked up an object approaching the capsule so it definitely existed and it was definitely there yet we have no explanations for the space orb. At number 4 is the flying object. In March of 1991, Russian cosmonaut Musa Manarov filmed a very strange occurrence from the Mir space station. Way behind the station in the distance there seemed to be a weird white reflective object. From what I could tell it was a vertical spacecraft that was almost reflecting light off of it every few seconds. At one point the reflection light turns a reddish colour and then the craft changes from vertical to horizontal and continues moving. The footage I watched came from the archives of the Soviet space authorities so at least we know that it's legit. Most critics tried to argue the video was simply some space junk but Musa vehemently disagreed. Filling our number 3 slot is the Millennium Falcon. Now while watching the ISS NASA live feed back in 2016, Jaden Beeson said he saw a metal spaceship. He said the UFO that he saw seemed similar to the Millennium Falcon found in Star Wars so he realised he definitely needed to take a screenshot to prove what he was seeing. The metal craft had a blue glow to it and stayed hovering above earth for about 2 minutes. It's very clear to see it's not a small craft by any means. Either way Jaden sent the image to NASA but has not gotten any explanation or response back. Which makes the whole thing even more suspicious. Are all these crafts just hovering above earth and then just going away? Why? Please just come in you guys. We are friends. Friends of ET. Friends of extraterrestrials. <laughs> now at number 2 are the Dropa Stones in Space. Didn't think that one would make a comeback in the video now did you? Back in 2006, NASA taped some debris floating around the shuttle Atlantis on mission STS-115. The first thing seen is a rectangular object that seems to be in the same orbital path as the Atlantis. The debris were donut like white objects that were pulsating with light. Now most people think it wasn't debris at all and that NASA is just saying that when they full well know it's something else. They told the public that maybe the debris 
were items that had gotten loose from the shuttle or had accidentally discharged from the bay. The Atlantis flight director said it's common to see bits of debris when astronauts open the payload doors at the start of mission, but it's unusual seeing objects late in the mission as they did in this case. But the debris had an uncannily similar appearance to the Droba stone shaped things that were found passing the STS 75 mission as well. The stones were miles wide and could be seen behind a 12 mile tether as it went into space and snapped loose. And finally, at number one is Major Vladimir. Now, Major General Vladimir Kovalnyok was a cosmonaut in the 80s who saw something bizarre during the Saljuk mission. They were moving over South Africa when he saw an oval shaped object. Initially, it flew straight, but then an explosion of golden light happened. A few seconds later, the oval object transformed into two golden spheres. After that, Vladimir just saw white smoke and the spheres had just disappeared. He said he tried to take a picture of it, but it exploded just before. Before he could. When he reported to Mission Control, it was all over Soviet headlines, magazines, newspapers, and most people excluded any option of it being extraterrestrial, but it did happen. It has no explanation and it was seen by not one but two people Vladimir and his partner Viktor Savinkh.